Okay, it says I'm live. Am I, though? It wouldn't surprise me if I'm not, because that's just the day that I've been having. Let me do a quick check here to see if I am, and yes, there I am. Whew. All right, folks, I just walked in the door from work 10 minutes ago and had to clean everything up, and oh, it's been an absolute disaster. But isn't it always a disaster on Thursdays? I don't know what it is, but... For some reason, my work just seems to mess with me on Thursdays because that's the day I'm streaming. Maybe I should start streaming at 10 o'clock at night like I did last night with Friday Fish Facts because then I don't have any problem getting here on time. I'm all tired. My eye is twitching. Oh, it's going to be a fun night. But anyway, welcome everyone. Super excited to be here tonight. <coughs> We've already got a bunch of people in here. I don't have it on my screen uh, to tell me how many people are here, but I'm happy for each and every one of you to be here and very, uh, very honored that you would join me here on a Thursday night. Um, already see people in the chat talking about stuff. Uh, <laughs> the question, of course, that stands out to me already is, is she going to be on? No, not tonight. Um, she's going to be in the chat but she's not going to be on here with me tonight. Uh, she did say next week, though. So we'll have to see about that. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, but she has been doing a lot. And, of course, she is Lisa. I got yelled at for calling her she. So that is why uh, JC's Fish and Shrimp is kind of throwing in that little inside joke there about calling her she. But uh, she will be with me next week. And you're going to be seeing a lot of her uh, in the next coming days. Uh, and that's the first thing that we have to talk about. No, we don't. We got something else to talk about first. And that is the fact that you can't see them right now, but we got four new fish in this tank today. Uh, I don't know if you're going to see them. I've got an OB I want to get rid of. Anybody want him? <laughs> uh, because this OB is becoming an SOB. And I think I'm going to have to let him go because he's terrorizing everybody in the tank. And he's even terrorizing the new fish that we got today. Now, the new fish that came in today, I'm not going to tell you anything about. You'll probably see them swimming around in there today if they're not hiding from that stupid OB. He's the, the OB is a gorgeous fish, but he is a real jerk. Look at him. I'm not going to tell you the story behind him. Uh, it is a really cool story, and it's something that means a lot to me, how these fish ended up in this tank right here. Uh, we're doing a video all about it. When, uh, when they came in today, they were shipped to us. Lisa brought them in and she unboxed them and she did a video of that. And it's, it's a story that has a lot of ups and downs, but in the end, it's a really cool story. And it's, uh, it's something that I very much appreciate. <clears throat> and you'll understand that more when, uh, when I actually get to it. If the individual responsible for this is on here right now, understand I am in your debt and uh, and I appreciate it very much. Be looking for that video. It's going to be coming out. Four peacocks, by the way. Dragon Blood, uh, Red Top Lawanda, a, a Sunshine Benga. There's a bunch of different names for that fish. And then a Lemon Jake. Four absolute big male stunners that got sent to us today. Uh, absolutely love it. Can't wait to share that video with you. Next thing we got to talk about here real quick as we wait for people to file in here before we get into the uh, the main topic of the day. We've got a couple of couple of quick things, if there is such thing in my world of quick things. Uh, the first episode of 10 Things, this Sunday, it's going to go up. I, I said it last night in Ron's live stream, and I'll say it again. I believe it's the best video I've ever done. It, wholeheartedly, the best I've ever done. Hopefully you feel the same way. If you don't, that's okay because you know what? What I love the most about it is how happy I am with it, how happy it made me do it, doing it, how much fun Lisa and I had. I know this is going to sound weird, but doing it together, <laughs> G-rated folks, uh, it, the whole thing has been, it's been wonderful and I'm so excited about it. Can't wait to share it with you. Sunday morning when you wake up, depending on where you live, if you are one of my friends here in the U.S. or I guess North America, um, it'll be up when you get up on Sunday morning. Uh, and and it, everybody sleeps in on Sundays, right? 
Uh, for you folks on the West Coast, you know, it's going to be up in the middle of the night for you. So uh, really excited about it. And I can't wait to hear what you think about it. So definitely in that video, uh, watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments of that. And, you know, let's go. That's, that's all I have to say about it. Let's go. Because this is going to be a new thing for us. And I think it's going to change the game for us in a big way. So very, very cool. Can't wait to share it with you. I know I've been talking about it way too much over the last few weeks, so I'm going to stop talking about that now. But the next thing I want to talk about is what's going to happen a few hours after that video uploads. I'm going to do a members only live stream here on the YouTube channel. Uh, if you are a member of the KG team, you will be uh, sent a notification saying that I'm going live. It's going to be 12 noon Sunday. Eastern Standard Time. So for my friends over there in the West Coast, which I know three of my moderators are from, or four of them actually are from, no, Candy, you're not in California. What am I saying? But you're on that time zone, uh, and there's three that live in California. So I know y'all are going to be, it's nine o'clock in the morning for y'all. So if you decide not to get up, I totally understand. But members only live stream, if you don't know what that means, Right down below this video, you'll see a little button that says join. This is something that's completely optional. You don't have to do it. This channel is free. It's always going to be free. But if you choose to be a member, a, a sponsor of this channel, you'll click on that button. And uh, and it's $5 a month and you get some special little perks. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I don't want to do a sales pitch every single week. But that's what it's all about. You probably know about channel memberships now by now because so many of the channels have them. Um, so that's what it is. If you join, you get some special perks and you can go to a members only live stream this weekend on Sunday at 12 noon. We'll talk all about the first episode of 10 things and we'll talk about all different kinds of stuff. Uh, in the last one that we did, we talked about so much stuff and it was a blast. It was very laid back, very easy going. It was a lot of fun. If you want to be a part of that, click that join button down below. I know it's five bucks a month. I know everybody can't do that. I get it. But that's how you can become a part of that. Last thing, very quick. I mention it every week because I feel like he's worthy of me mentioning it. Corey's giveaway, Aquarium Co-op's giveaway. It's in, it's in the description, isn't it? Today has been such a blur. Yes, it's at the very top of the description. He's given away five $200 gift cards this, this month, folks. So you got to get on that because it's December and we could all use an extra $200 in our pocket. He's giving away five of those. So join that uh, giveaway down there and, uh, and, and you might win. You never know. Very cool. So let's go through the chat here real quick. Are you all getting any issues with uh, audio right now? Because I keep seeing it going red. Um, Maybe I ought to turn it down a little bit. I think I can do that. We'll have to see. Hopefully that doesn't mess it up for all of you, but maybe it's just because I'm screaming all the time. So let's go through the chat here real quick as we continue to wait uh, for people to show up. Audio is good. Okay, thank you, Candy. Um, check your email. I, ne I need one of your OBs. Well, I only have one OBs and I don't sell fish anymore. Um, who was that that said that? Will Richardson. Uh, I know a lot of people don't know that because I didn't take the videos down from back in the day when I had my fish store. Uh, we are not, um, we're not selling fish anymore. So I don't have any uh, OBs to sell you. But if you live locally, I can meet up with you somewhere and I can give you that one. I'll give them to you for free because he's being a jerk and I don't want him to mess with those new fish that I got. So, okay. Um, do you give fantasy football advice? I probably should. I probably, uh, my channel would probably be a lot bigger than it is. No, I don't give fantasy football advice and I don't play fantasy football. Uh, not because I don't like it. I have done it before and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but my football team is a disaster and it's very depressing to be a uh, part of something like that. So anyway, <laughs> okay, scroll back here a little bit. Us Americans don't really get international norms. Hmm. What's that for? Let's see. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Well, I'm not going to be able to go through 
and welcome every single person. Uh, that was one of the things that Ron did last night in the Friday Fish Facts um, live stream, which I think is really cool that he does that. Uh, but, I mean, it would just take half the show for me to do that. There's already so many people in here. So I appreciate the fact that he does that. I think that's really cool, but I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, so welcome to everyone that is here uh, today. Oh, if you didn't watch that live stream last night, go watch it. Friday Fish Facts. You'll see me like this on the thumbnail. Uh, go watch that. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, quick little shout out here to my, my boy. I think it's a boy. I don't know. <laughs> CC Games. I'm pretty sure like 85% of my viewership is males. So I automatically assume that. But can't wait to see the new series. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much for the $2 super chat. I can't wait for you to see it too. I, I just, I'm, it's got me completely re-energized. It's got me, it's just a whole new world for me. Look how much, look how much I'm swinging my hands around. It's, it's got me so totally excited. And she, yeah, I said it again. She is excited too. So that's very, very cool. So can't wait for you to see it. CC Games. Uh, I saw a butt fumble comment. <laughs> Long live the butt fumble. Hey, let me tell you something, Ethan Wilson. I don't know if you watched that game on Sunday where uh, Mark Sanchez started at QB. The dude was playing good. It's just that the idiot receivers couldn't catch the ball. Dude was playing his guts out, and the team just wasn't backing him up. It was unfortunate. But anyway, yeah, the butt fumble. I mean, I feel bad for Mark Sanchez because he walks around. He's like a Greek god. He's like a well, not Greek, but like a Hispanic god, you know, and he's like, he looks like a model and he's a professional football player and he makes millions of dollars and all anybody ever says is butt fumble. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look it up uh, on YouTube. You should know what it is, but uh, look it up on YouTube. Just type in butt fumble. That's all you need to do and you'll see it. And it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a funny thing. So tonight we <clears throat> are going to talk about shipping fish. Um, I'm going to tell you what happened here with this, because this is, this is special. This is special for me. Okay. Lisa gave me this idea to do this topic tonight. Uh, and it just so happens to be on a day where we received fish in the mail. Isn't that something? I mean, it was almost like she could see the future, but she actually suggested this to me four or five days ago to talk about shipping fish. She took the time to go through the channel and say, yeah, we haven't talked about this in a long time, so let's do that. And I, I, I thank her for that. Um, and she was in here before I clicked the start streaming button. She was coaching me up and stuff like that. That is how excited she is about uh, her YouTube bug that she has. <laughs> That's She is so excited about it, and, and so am I, because she has always been all in with fish keeping with me. She was all in with KG Tropicals, the business. With YouTube, it took a little longer to get her on board because she was just camera shy. She didn't want to do anything in front of the camera. But now that woman is running me ragged is what she's doing because she's literally, and I'm not joking, she's filling up SD cards, 64, what is it, gigabyte, megabyte? I don't know, 64. It has a big 64 on the cards. I think they're 64. They might even be bigger than that. They're big cards, and she's filling them up every day. And she's like, I, I don't have any more space on the cards. you got to empty them out. <laughs> it's like, all right. So very excited about that. She is going to be doing uh, plenty of videos on her own. She recorded two today. So look out, y'all. It's coming. Um, but she is the one that actually suggested that I talk about shipping fish today. So everybody, let's give her a round of applause. Let's let's say yes to her. Uh, some shameful, horrible, despicable human being just put Go Cowboys in the comment section. And I sent that person an invitation to something the other day. And what I'm going to say is if you want to be a part of what I sent you the thing for the other day, my friend, you might want to rethink that stupid, ridiculous Go Cowboys chat that you put up because I'm having second thoughts about what we talked about. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, I have so much fun with Cowboy fans, and Cowboy fans have fun with us, so it's it's a good time. Joel G N Z Joel G New Zealand. I didn't know that that's what it stood for until I was watching somebody else's 
live stream. Thanks, Candy Overholes, GoFundMe.com. Yes, Caleb Overholes. Yes, uh, everybody has to go over there. You should know what that is by now. I'm not going to explain the whole thing again because Candy would probably be like, come on, do we have to hear it again? So I'm not going to explain the whole thing. Go to that GoFundMe. Donate a bunch of money. It's Christmas time. Come on. I heard your favorite fish is Calvis. I love them so far. I got four species. They are a fish I love very much, Aquaballs, but they are not my favorite. Um, but anyway, see, that's what happens when you look at the chat. We're talking about shipping fish. So what I want to do here, folks, I, I want to get back to what I used to do early on with live streams, which is let's go with a topic and let's run with that topic and see where it takes us rather than I'm just going to be honest with you. I love live streaming. I, I think I'm okay at it. I don't know. But what I'm not good at is doing all Q and A. And you know what? It shows. Nobody watches those videos as far as the standards of my channels, uh, my channel. I'm not trying to sound conceited here, but the, the views that I get to Q and A videos are nothing compared to when I actually have a topic and views don't matter all that much, but I don't know. I mean, it, the number, seeing the number kind of makes you feel, feel better about it. You know what I mean? So what I want to do is focus on a topic. We'll spend some time on that topic, however long it takes. I'm going to ignore, not ignore, but I'm going to hold off of the chat until we're done with that topic. But don't worry, folks. That doesn't mean you can't put comments up. It doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. It doesn't mean I'm not going to see what you're saying because I have a secret weapon and her name is Lisa, not she. And she is upstairs and she is actually manning the chat for me. And she is going to send me the questions that she wants or, or she thinks are, you know, I should answer. Uh, and Will Richardson actually says, yes, I am local. Well, uh, let me tell you something. You want that OB? You can have him. I'll bring him to you this weekend. Uh, yeah, because he's going to go. I'm going to put him in a little box tonight. Not a, a little breeder box. And, uh, and he's going to go in there. And then she did also... Uh, tell me that Jeff Rose said go Redskins. So there you go. Smart man. So <laughs> let's talk about shipping fish. Um, this is a, a topic that I have talked about in the past. Uh, wait a minute. See, here we go. I looked at the chat. I made the mistake because that weird guy, that weird guy that lives over there in like the Seattle area says he always ignores me. And when are you going to take a hint, Bob? I mean, when are you going to get with it and just recognize, you know, I mean, figure it out. It's not that hard. <laughs> I'm going to stop looking at the chat now because that happens. In fact, I'm going to take this window right here and I'm going to cover it up. I can't see it anymore. Can't see the chat. So shipping fish, it, this is something that to me is still interesting. It's still because... When I started fish keeping in 1993, there was, it was unheard of. You, it just, no, if you can't go to the store and buy your fish, you didn't get them. But that doesn't mean that shipping fish wasn't a thing back then. It certainly was. There were hobbyists shipping fish to other hobbyists. I, I never had that happen, but uh, I know that it was happening. And you have to think about this, folks. And this is something that never really registered with me back then. There has been shipping fish. There, there, okay, there are still people that I have talked to recently that have said, what, you can ship fish? You can ship them through FedEx or UPS? What? That's crazy. They're ne they'd never survive. There's no way. My response to them is, they there's been shipping fish as long as there's been fish in glass boxes. How do you think they got to the pet stores? You know what I mean? I mean, they, they were not taken out of the rivers or the streams and have it in a net and they run to the store real quick and deliver the fish. I mean, it, how do you think they got there? They got there by shipping fish. Now, back then, they weren't doing it by way of UPS and, and FedEx and all of that. They were doing that by, by way of the airports, which a lot of the retailers, most in fact, are still doing it that way because it's significantly cheaper to have the fish shipped uh, by way of the airports. And a lot of times what can happen is the the farm will bag up the fish in the morning 
take them to the airport, fly them to wherever they're going. They'll reach the other, you know, the destination by four or five o'clock in the afternoon. The fish store picks them up, takes them in, puts them in the tanks. They're, they're not in bags overnight. Now this isn't every time. I mean, <clears throat> Lisa and I had times where we would be at the airport at one o'clock in the morning and picking up these fish, bringing them back, putting them in the tanks, you know, it'd be three o'clock in the morning before we got done. I mean, that happened one time. It's not like that happened all the time, but this has been going on ever since there was aquariums. There's been ship, there's been fish being shipped in bags and styrofoam boxes throughout the world, not just, um, not just the United States. Look at that jerk. Look at him. He's a beautiful fish, but he's an idiot. So shipping fish, if you think about it, it's really not that taboo. It's not that crazy. It's not that, you know, ridiculous. Um, but the, the question becomes why, like, why would people ship fish anymore? I mean, there's so many pet stores and all this kind of stuff. Well, the answer is there isn't so many pet stores anymore. I mean, they're shutting down every single day and it's a damn shame. Pardon my language. Hopefully I don't get demonetized, but it's a shame that they're disappearing the way they are. The, the fish store that I tell the story, whenever anybody asks me, how'd you get into fish? I talked about this last night. How'd you get into fish? It was at Creatures and Critters in Woodbridge, Virginia. That was where I fell in love with this hobby. That store is no more. We're talking about a store that I went to for 15 years. My best friend worked there as a, as a, a, a teenager. I mean, this was a, a, like a staple in my neighborhood and it's gone. And it was gone after being in business for like 30 years. Why? Because of the big box stores and because of what we are talking about here today. The fact that we can readily order fish whenever we want from multiple different suppliers all over the country and have them shipped to us the next day and they're alive and they're healthy and they're happy. Um, so there's that. And then along with the fact that retailers, they don't really want to mess around selling filters and foods and stuff like that anymore because everybody orders those off of Amazon. So these stores are shutting down right and left. And it's, it's, a, it's very, it's a shame. That's not why my store shut down, by the way, but that's something that happens all the time. It's happening every day and it is a shame. And it's not just the fish hobby. It's every type of business. Basically, probably 10 years from now, we're going to have Walmarts, We'll probably just have Walmarts. <laughs> That's what we're going to have. And everything else will come from Amazon. I mean, it's just the way it's going. So um, that's why it's so important that this is a thing, that shipping fish is a thing, because you're probably, you probably don't have a local fish store around you. I mean, I certainly don't. It's an hour and a half either direction for us to go to, well, maybe not, because Beltway Aquariums just opened up a couple of years ago. Anyway. It's a long drive. It's not like a, you know, a 10 minute drive down the road and I'm to my local fish store where I can hang out and talk about fish with all the other fish nerds in there. That doesn't exist for me. It's a, it's a day trip to go to a local fish store for me. And I'm sure it is for a lot of you too. And so if that, it, you know, what would make you more mad than calling up the fish store? Hey, do you have any German red peacocks? Yeah, we got three of them. All right, I'm on my way. And you get there three hours later and the, oh, some guy just came in and bought all of them. That's happened to me before. That's frustrating. So a lot of people, including myself, are turning to online retailers to order fish, where you will order the fish, they will ship them to you overnight by way of UPS, FedEx, uh, USPS, or the airports. Um, so there's a lot of ways that this can be done. I know you all know this, but I just like to kind of open it up a little bit as to why people would be doing this. I mean, if you are a hardcore fish nerd like you are, then you want fish that are never going to be at a Petco or a PetSmart or probably even your local pet store because they're, you know, you probably want some obscure oddball fish that the fish store's never even heard of. So they have no thoughts of even bringing that fish in. So, I mean, I, I, we got that all the time. Do you have this? Do you have that? And like, no, not only do I not have that, but I've never even heard of that. So it happens all the time. So uh, there's no way you can have every single fish. So ordering fish online, having them sent to you is not a crazy concept. It's not a taboo thing. It is not bad for the fish. It is actually fine for the fish. And it's not the first time that they have been shipped unless you're buying 
direct from a breeder like a live fish direct uh imperial tropicals uh i know breeds a lot of their fish if not all of them i'm not 100 percent sure um and uh, uh cichlid shack breeds a lot of his stuff so if that's the case if you're ordering one of their home bred fish then you know it's going to be the first time that they've ever been shipped but more than likely the the fish that you know they're bringing in fish too because you can't breed everything and so you know it's not going to be the first time that your fish has been shipped in fact a lot of times when we would ship out fish it would be the third time that that fish has been shipped because you've got from the farms to the distributor then from the distributor to us and then from us to you i mean depending on the fish sometimes it would be the third time that they've been shipped and they're fine it's not all that crazy if it's done right and it can be done wrong so that's what we're going to get into here tonight we're going to talk about uh if you want to ship fish i'm going to talk about what you would need to do for that and then also i'm going to get you prepared if you've never ordered fish before and you want to order from from any of these companies. I mean, there's tons of them out there. The, really, the only ones that I'm fully aware of are the African cichlid ones and the discus ones. Shocker, I know. But there are tons of retailers out there shipping fish all over the country. And a lot of them I've probably never even heard of. But it doesn't matter who you're getting them from. You The process is going to be the same for all of them. So. Okay. I'm looking at my notes here. I had to do notes. I did them this morning really quick before I left for work. So the first thing I want to talk about is my dog barging into the room because she wants to see what's up. And okay, who's going to come up here? Come here. This one won the contest. Come on. All three of them want to be in my lap right now, but, uh, but there's only room for one, maybe two. Come here. All right. I've got two now. Two of them are on here. All right, you guys lay down. Okay, so yeah, Joel shows his fi his fish. He shows his dogs all the time. I'm gonna show my dogs. These are my babies, Mags and Ike. Ike is a kisser. If you haven't figured that out by now, Mags. She is a little bit more uh, bashful, but anyway. Okay, <laughs> so and Roxy is down here on the floor. You can't see her, but uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so. Let's say your local fish store is three hours away and you don't, you're, they don't carry what you want or, I mean, let me shut this door. Watch out. Go, go out, Roxy. Go, 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 go somewhere else. You see how easily I'm distracted. I mean, having a dog in here is going to be horrible for me. So if you're like me, isn't that dragon blood awesome? And you don't have any local fish stores really close to you, and you're entertaining the idea of ordering fish, it's very simple to be ready to receive your fish because it's something that you would already do. But the thing is, if you go to your local fish store, how many times have you gone to your local fish store and you've bought you just went there for no just to look around and you ended up taking four or five fish home i bet you you've done it we all have you're not prepared come on dogs really i'm just gonna let them stay mags are you coming in okay the door needs to be closed because my voice echoes through the whole house y'all can stay in here but you need to behave yourself so you're buying these fish lisa Lisa did this at the aquatic experience. Yes, she certainly did. You're not prepared for them. You're not prepared for taking them home and getting them acclimated and getting them in the tanks. But it doesn't matter because you're, they're only going to be in the bags for a couple of hours because you're going to bag them up and you're going to take them home and you're going to put them right in the tank. But <laughs> thank you. I don't know how you can stop them from coming in. Lisa saves the day. So you're not prepared, but it's okay because the fish have only been in the bags for a couple of hours. The, it's a little different when they've been shipped. Now, I don't want you to panic though, because the, the shipper, the person who has shipped the fish to you, has done things to the bags, to the water, to the fish, to have them prepared for this trip so that they're not gonna die if it takes you 20 minutes to set up when the box comes in the house. But the ideal thing, the way we like to do it, is be ready 
when the box shows up to have everything laid out, have everything ready so that when the box comes in, they can immediately go into the tank, especially now that it's 30 degrees outside here, depending on where you live. If you live in Florida, <laughs> screw you, but <laughs> you got plenty of places to go to buy fish anyway. Why would you be ordering them online? But I'm talking about people who live in nice weather areas. You people in New Mexico and Arizona and yeah, all of you people, Nevada, Southern California, I can't stand the weather that y'all have because I'm so jealous of it. But might not be as big of an issue for you, but in the wintertime for us, I don't want that box sitting out on the front porch for three hours waiting for me. So the first thing that you would need to do to be prepared is to make sure you coordinate with whoever's shipping the fish to you a day to receive them when you're going to be available. This is what we did with these fish that were shipped to us today. We knew Lisa was going to be here. So they shipped them today and she was here, heard the doorbell, brought them right in. They weren't sitting in my porch. So if that means you have to pay a little extra to get the fish delivered on a Saturday, makes sense to do that. We, Lisa and I used to both work outside of the house and we used to order fish from Live Fish Direct all the time, like twice a month. And every single time we paid the $20 extra to get the Saturday delivery. Now at the time we're ordering $300 worth of fish an extra $20, you know, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean? But if you're ordering a $10 fish and you're paying, you know, that could be a little out of control, but we were ordering, you know, two dozen fish at a time to put together breeding groups. So for us, adding that $20 wasn't that big a deal. But if you have to do that, almost every retailer is going to have that option available to you. And usually they're going to charge extra money for that because FedEx or UPS or whoever is going to charge them extra for delivering it and guaranteeing for it to be delivered on a Saturday. The only drawback to that, and this is just something to be warned about, I've never really run into this issue with Saturday deliveries, but the only thing that scares me about that is if you order them and you you coordinate it, uh, some of the... the um, retailers like Live Fish Direct, they, it actually pulls up a drop down window for you. When do you want these delivered? And you select the date that you want them delivered. Uh, others, they might coordinate through email with you on when you want to get them delivered. The only thing about it is if you say, okay, ship them out Friday for a Saturday delivery. What if that thing, whatever that thing is, does happen and they're not able to get them to you on Saturday? Well, this time of year, because of Amazon, they're still running on Sundays, but during the normal time of year, UPS, FedEx, they don't run on Sundays. The Postal Service does, but UPS doesn't, at least not around me. I don't see them big, ugly trucks. But so if something were to happen that delayed the shipping, I'm going to tell you right now, UPS, FedEx, they don't care. They're just going to sit your box either in a truck or in a warehouse, and it's just going to sit there until Monday morning. So that scares me a little bit. If you were to do it during the week and... It did get delayed. It was only one more day and your chances are better. I've actually had fish. There's a video way back. I wish I would have thought that I was going to talk about this. I would put the link in the description. There was a, uh, a box of fish that we shipped out to a customer. We shipped them out. I, I might have my days wrong, but I'm pretty sure we shipped them out on a Monday and it was my mistake. I, I screwed up here because the guy had told me when he wanted them delivered. I read it wrong or I got it confused with another customer or something like that. He wanted them the following Monday. This guy was a truck driver and he he's like, I'm not going to be there tomorrow when these things are delivered. He got the notification, you know, because we would email out the tracking information and all that. And he was like, I'm not going to be there. There's not going to be anybody there to get the fish and it's winter time and those fish are going to die. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. So I'm immediately on the horn with uh, FedEx we were using at the time. Not FedEx's fault, my fault. And it, it, it took a while. I mean, it was a lot of back and forth. It was them having to find the fish. We don't know where they are. We're, we're trying to find them, blah, 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 trying to stop them, turn them around and send them back to me. The, the, the end of the story here, folks, without going too far, we got them back in our shop at 8 p.m. Thursday. They were packed on Monday morning, shipped out. We got them back at 8 p.m. Thursday. Every single fish was still alive. Now, I'd love to pump out my chest and say, that's because I'm such a genius at packing fish. But I, I was not expecting that. I was expecting a couple to be alive. I wasn't just going to leave them out there, you know, 
I was like, send them back to me. It's going to cost me money. I lost a ton of money on that whole deal. But it's four, four days they were packed up in those bags, came back to me. Perfect. In fact, they were so good, I packed them back up the next week and shipped them to them. They got to him in perfect condition. Every fish survived the whole ordeal, and it was beautiful, and everybody was happy. So it can be done, but I would be willing to bet that if you, if they're to get, like, if something were to happen, okay, this happened on a Monday. So I was able to coordinate with that FedEx because they were still in operation because it was during the week. But if this happened on Saturday, I'm going to tell you what, FedEx is going to shut down and they're like, we don't care about you. We're done for the weekend. We're out. We'll call us Monday morning. And so if they're sitting in a truck or something like that, they're, they're probably not going to make it. So that's the only thing that scares me about Saturday deliveries, although that never happened to me. So there you go. Uh, but that's the first thing that you need to do to be prepared to receive fish is make sure you're going to be available to receive them. Because in the wintertime, if they sit out on your porch five, six hours, I know they're in insulated boxes. I know there's heat packs in there, but you never know. You never know what's going to happen. So definitely be wary of that. Be ready for them when they come in. I am not going to be interrupted by the chat, but I will be interrupted when it comes to a super chat. Jamie McDonald with the 499 super chat. Can we get at Candy Hoverholes to 200 subs? She only needs three more. Come on, folks. How can Candy Overhauls only have 197 subscribers? That's almost like, uh, hard. it's almost hard to believe. I, I don't even believe that. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. Let's make that happen. Good heads up there, Jamie McDonald. So, and thank you for the $5 too, by the way. So be ready to receive them. Also, when they come into the house, it's just a good practice to have everything set aside, ready, to get them out of the box and get them acclimating into your tank. Now, what I recommended to everyone that I shipped fish to, and there was one guy, one, that ignored my instructions. I actually sent an email instruction and I would send a paper with our shipments that had instructions on how to acclimate these fish, which my recommendation to people was the float and drop method, which is Float the bags. You do this, I'm sure. Float the bags on top of your tank. Let the temperature get the same in the bag as it is in your aquarium. Remove the fish from the water in the bag. Drop the fish and the fish only into the tank. I did a whole video about this like seven years ago, six years ago. So it's there. Go watch that. Uh, it's It's got a lot, of, a lot of views, actually. That's how I have done every single fish that I have ever been shipped and that's how I have recommended to everyone that receives my fish when I was shipping fish to acclimate them that way. The one guy that didn't had a fish die and he threw a fit and I it got ugly. It got real ugly. I love the internet. But that's, you know, the one guy. I mean, at least the only one that did that and didn't told me. There might have been other people that had problems acclimating and just never said anything. But this guy Drip acclimated his fish, and one of them died during the whole process. And I don't know if it was the drip acclimation that caused it. I think it probably was, but, you know, who knows? I wasn't there, and I'm not a veterinarian, and uh, so I don't know. But that is the process that I use, and that's the process that probably every retailer that you purchase fish from is going to recommend to you. We're not talking about saltwater here, folks. I know that's a completely different deal. We're talking about freshwater fish because that's all I really talk about on this channel. So freshwater fish, float and drop. That is the method. So you know what you need to float and drop your fish, right? You need a bucket. You need a net. You need some scissors or a knife. Scissors are a little bit easier to control. A knife, you might slice right through your finger or the fish. Scissors, it's easier. Um, have all of that ready to put into... To, to be able to acclimate these fish and get them ready. And another easy way to do it would be to bring them in, open up the box, float the fish while they're floating, go get your bucket, get your net, get all of that stuff, your scissors and all that kind of stuff. I know it's common sense, but I have to be fully transparent here, right? I said I was going to allow 
super chats to interfere CC games again. Just over and over and over, putting money in my pocket. Speaking of shipping fish, should I get some peaks? Peaks, peacocks from Live Fish Direct, and do you think a 40 breeder will fit them? I'm thinking about Eureka Reds. Eureka Reds are a great choice. Live Fish Direct is a great choice. And a 40-gallon breeder is a great choice. So yes, 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 and yes. Uh, I would definitely recommend them. I've got, I've had so many fish from them, uh, and they've never let me down. I mean, they, they're they awesome. There are a lot of really good companies out there, including companies that I'm friends with. Um, but but yeah, I mean, and even those companies would say, yeah, I don't blame you for recommending Live Fish Direct. Um, but I'm going to tell you about a company that up until a couple of days ago, I had never heard of that shipped me these fish. Uh, again, wait for that video. Uh, they're not from Live Fish Direct. So we've talked about the common sense stuff, right? We've talked about how to be prepared. We've talked about acclimating them. Again, you might disagree with me on my philosophy of acclimating fish, but I'm going to tell you something. I haven't told a lot of people this. In the time that Lisa and I had our shop for two years, we probably received 5,000 fish. I don't know. And that is the process that we used to acclimate every single one of those. Do you really think that I'm going to take an air hose and tie it in a knot and put a little loop on it and stick it in the tank and suck on it and drip out? Come on. I'm not going to do all of that. That's crazy. No. We would float them, cut the bag open, scissors, dump the bag through the net, take the fish, plop them in the tank. They'd always be fine. You know who else does that? Discus Hans does that. Yes, with those fragile little snowflake discus that he has. The, he orders $100,000 worth of discus at a time. $100,000, folks. And that's wholesale price. He's bringing them in. He lines all of the styrofoam coolers up. And you know what he does? He goes through and he cuts all the top of the boxes and dumps them into the the, the styrofoam box. So the box now is full of water. They're watertight. And then he scoops the fish out and puts them in the in the tanks with discus. Small discus, big discus, $500 breeding pairs. That's what he does. So that's the way to do it. I mean, that's the way I've recommended to people for 25 years that they acclimate fish. When I was selling fish and I had a stake in the game, I would tell people to do it that way. It's just, it's just the easiest way. So don't be afraid to do it that way. Don't buy into this idea that you have to drip acclimate freshwater fish that have been shipped. No, they want to get out of that water. They want to get out of that toilet that they've been swimming around in for 24 hours as fast as they can. So get them out of there, get them into the fresh water. They'll be fine. Now, what if we want to flip this around a little bit? What if welcome a new member? You like how I did that? Welcome Captain Savage Aquatics. Welcome to the KG team. Make sure you join us on the members only live stream Sunday at 12 Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get to know each other there because right now I'm a little busy. But uh, okay, what if you want to ship fish out? Why would you want to ship fish out? Maybe you have a friend that you want to give some of your fish to. Maybe you have an OB who's a total <clears throat> and you're tired of him harassing everybody in your tank and you just got four new brand new fish and you just want them out of there. Well, it's not as difficult as you think, but there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. I'm gonna tell you, because we're not in business anymore, uh, getting texts like crazy constantly from Lisa giving me a question and then somebody out of the blue. Anyway, so I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did because I don't have any reason for it to be a secret. I mean, you know, I don't, and I don't think anybody that does ship fish for a living is going to be mad at me for doing this uh, because I know that not everybody does it this way. I mean, I, you know, I had my way of doing it. I talked to Hans, who I will not tell you how he did it, but he told me how he does it and it was nothing like what I did. So everybody has their own ways of doing it. Um, I fell into my methods of doing it. I liked it. It worked. We were successful doing it that way. So we did it this way. And that was using obviously heat packs, using oxygen in the tank, in the bags and methylene blue. Um, methylene blue is going to be one of those antibacterial things that's going to help keep the water at bay during the shipping. And 
hopefully help with things like major pH shifts and all that kind of stuff. At least that's the way it was explained to me. Uh, and it's been a long time since it was explained to me, so I might even be saying it wrong. But methylene blue, if you've ever ordered fish and you received them and the water was bright blue and you're like, whoa, why is that water bright blue? It's because they used methylene blue. If it was green, they used malachite green, which is a, a, a similar uh, product. I've received them both ways. Green like the new member uh, tag there for Captain Savage Aquatics. Bright green like that. It's malachite green. If it's blue like our uh, moderators are, that is methylene blue. So I can't explain to you exactly the science behind what these do, but I just know when I used it, it didn't. I didn't have fish die in shipping. Uh, hopefully, you know maybe um, maybe Jason Adams is here tonight. I don't see him in the chat. Maybe he's here and he can explain the effects that methylene blue has on uh, on uh, on fish. But it, it, I know it's an antibacterial thing, and this is another reason why you'll see uh, if you've ever watched like angel breeding videos where people will take the eggs with the parents are are bad parents and they're eating the eggs all the time. A lot of breeders they'll, they'll take the eggs out. They'll put a slate in there in the tank and let the angels lay the eggs on it. And then they'll pull the eggs out before the uh, parents have a chance to eat the eggs. And they'll put them into a tank and they'll put methylene blue in there. And again, it's just to avoid rot and bacteria and all that kind of stuff. That's why they put that in there. So that's what I would use. And I would use oxygen. The question is going to be, where in the world do you get oxygen? I'll tell you where I got it. There might be other sources. I don't know. We actually went and bought a regulator uh, from Home Depot, from the welding supply section at Home Depot. The reason why uh, we bought it there was because it was a lot cheaper from the other place that we ended up going to to get the oxygen tanks. To get the oxygen tanks, we went to a place that I don't even remember the name of, uh, but it was right down the street from Schools of Fish in Richmond. Uh, it was a welding supply store, and we would go and buy the oxygen tanks kind of back up here. They were like three feet tall. Uh, we would buy those, and I would usually have two, and then when one would empty, I would take it back. It was an hour and 15 minute drive, uh, but I would take it back there and then uh, swap it out for a full one. And it, it's almost exactly like dealing with propane for your grill. You know, you take the old, the empty tank and they give you a new one and it's like, I don't know, it was like 30 bucks or something like that. Um, but if you're only shipping fish every once in a while, you can do it a lot cheaper. You can get the really small tanks, the ones like the, the people with COPD and stuff like that would carry around with them, the little portable ones. You could get one of those smaller oxygen tanks, which wouldn't cost you nearly as much. Um, and if you're going to be shipping fish to a friend and stuff like that, if you need to go buy that stuff, talk to your friend and be like, hey, dude, help me out here with the, with the bill on this if you want me to send you these fish. But anyway, if he's a good friend, he'll help you with that. But we absolutely did that. If we ran out of oxygen, we would be calling or, or emailing our customers that day and saying, hey, you're not getting your fish because we're out of oxygen. You know, there's nothing we can do about it. The welding supply place is closed or whatever. I can remember a lot of times I would get into the shop in the morning. We'd be out of oxygen. I'd be like, oh, no. And I hadn't gone down and swapped out the tanks yet. So I'd be running down there first thing in the morning, getting new oxygen tanks, coming back, and packing the fish and shipping them out. I mean, we did things like that. But uh, if we were out of oxygen and there was no way to get more, the fish were not going out. We were not going to do it that way. Uh, I know not everybody is that way. Some people do the whole pull the bag thing and get that nice little air pocket tied on top of it. Not us. Uh, it was a must oxygen. And I'm, I can confidently say anybody that's shipping fish is going to do it that way. Um, as far as the bags that we would use... Uh, we would use the four mil thick bags, flat bottoms. Uh, that was important because we didn't want the, the pointy bottoms and fish can get down in there and, you know, get stuck if you're, if you're shipping small fish. Sometimes we would ship, you know, small inch and a half fish that could get stuck into there and stuff like that. So we would do that and we would double bag them. Um, and that, that's it. I mean, it's as easy as that. We would usually do, uh, I mean, I, I, we never measured water or anything like that. But if there was that much water in the bag, we would put that much oxygen in the bag. You know what I mean? We, basically, oxygen in it, no way. We wanted to make sure that they were in there 50-50, uh, basically, water to oxygen ratio. 
Um, and and I, I got a little bit ahead of myself. With the water, I would actually pre-mix the water uh, with the methylene blue, and I would also put prime in there to help with the ammonia because your fish, you're not going to stop them from pooping, right? Uh, even if you empty them, which is another thing that I didn't talk about. And I'm going to be totally honest. We didn't do it. And we were fine. Uh, we would feed our fish every day at the store, which a lot of retailers don't do. But we did that because we didn't want to, we didn't want to ship little, you know, disheveled, skinny little fish. We wanted them to be plump and healthy and happy. So we would feed them every single day. And, but what a lot of retailers would do would be to fast their fish for 24 hours before shipping them out. That's pretty smart. They empty out their bowels. That way they're not doing it in the bags when they're being shipped. It's very smart to do that, but we didn't do it. And the reason why we just, we didn't have the ability to do that because these fish are in tanks with other fish and we were shipping out fish every day. So if we were going to fast fish, we would either have to never feed our fish or have designated tanks all over the place that are for customer orders. We didn't have that kind of space. So it, we, we just weren't able to do it and it was never a problem. But perfect world scenario, fast those fish for a minimum of 24 hours before you pack them up into those bags. And even if you do that, they're still gonna poop. So you can't really stop them from doing that. So just know that going in. So fast them, mix up the water, methylene blue, and, uh, and, and prime. And as far as how much methylene blue I would use, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I just don't remember. Uh, it was literally like I had it down to a science where I would fill up a five gallon bucket. I would heat the bucket. I would, uh, put the prime in there, whatever amount of prime you need for five gallons. And then I, I did, I think it was like 25 drops of methylene blue and, and that would be it. And I would have a, um, a little circulation pump in there, moving it around, and I could get a couple of days worth of shipments out of that. Uh, so we weren't shipping hundreds of fish a day. We were, you know, a couple of boxes. Uh, so I was able to get a couple of days out of that. But like Hans has a one of those giant Rubbermaid big trash cans full of water that he mixes up for shipping. I'm not going to give you his recipe that he used, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, he shipped a whole lot more fish than I did. He was fishing, he was shipping dozens and dozens and dozens of fish every single day. So, methylene blue, prime, clean water straight out of the tap, not water from your tank. Okay, that's how we did it. Now, I know there's going to be people that are going to be like, well, hmm, that's water that they're not used to. That's true, but it's completely clean. So that's why we would do it that way. Mixing up water, and this is shipping water. We're not going to take water from the tank, put that water in the bags with the fish, and ship that. No. Specific water for the fish. Nice and clean. Perfect. No ammonia in it. No nitrates in it. No nothing. Uh, perfectly clean water to pack them in and ship them. So that's how we would do it. Double bag them. Put them into the bags with a heat pack. A 24-hour heat pack. Don't run down to the local Gander Mountain and buy a four-hour heat pack or an eight-hour heat pack. Get a 24-hour one. They're going to cost you a little bit more, but it makes total sense. Or just order them off of Amazon. I mean, that's they're right there. They're not hard to find. Um, and they're not that expensive either. And one of the big pointers that I would always give people is open up that heat pack before you start packing your fish and set it there. Shake it up a little bit. Set it there where you're packing your fish and just leave it alone. Then pack your fish up and then you can check it and make sure it's warm. Because what you don't want to have happen is you crack it open, you shake it up, you put it in the box, you seal the box up and you had a dud. You had a blank in there. It happens. And you don't want to realize that when they're half the way to Chicago. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you want to know that that heat pack is doing its thing. If we were putting a lot of fish in a box, we would put two, one on each end. And we would always, we're dealing with African cichlids here. You know, we would always have a bag that was suitable for the fish. So we, we would have like little three inch bags. We would have four inch bags. If it was a bigger fish, obviously it would go in a four inch bag. And we would always stand the, or, or lay the bags flat 
because it gives the fish a little bit of going back and forth room. You know, you understand what I mean? Plus the boxes that we had, it just kind of worked that way. But sometimes, it, and we would put a little bit more water in those bags, by the way. But anyway, sometimes it was the perfect scenario, the, a big box, it was a big order, we would stand them up and that's okay, but we would use bigger bags in that situation uh, so that the fish just have a little bit of room swimming around. We had ordered fish from places before where they were literally like, like barely hanging on to the last little bit of water in the tank or in the bags. I'm not into that. I wanted to give them plenty of room uh, to, to swim around and to be comfortable and not be all crammed up in there. Uh, because, uh, hey, let's face it, you're being put into a very small area and then you're being put in a box and it's not like FedEx and UPS is gentle with this stuff. They're getting thrown around and they're up and down and they're uh, going all over the place and it's pitch black dark in there and it's warm but not real warm. Give them room to swim around. It would cost me a little bit more money because it would weigh more, but in the end, I would be, I would feel better about it. And again, my fish got to the other end alive. So there you go. Um, boxes, boxes are available, uh, in multiple places. Uh, there, I used, I don't even remember. There's so many different places that I used. We were fortunate in that we ordered from a lot of farms that would send us box, send us fish in boxes that were perfect. So we would reuse those, which was beautiful. Uh, but sometimes if it was just a couple of fish, we, we would purchase boxes. Uh, and there's a couple of websites I think one of them is, is actually called shipyouraquatics.com. Uh, relatively inexpensive. If you go on Amazon and you order shipping boxes that are actually labeled as shipping boxes, what those people are doing is they're buying them from Ship Your Aquatics, marking them up and selling them on Amazon. You know all those people that get rich on Amazon from, from you know flipping stuff? That's what's happening there. So go to Ship Your Aquatics and order them direct from them. They sell everything there from the bags to the rubber bands to close the bags up to the, uh, they don't sell any of the chemicals, but uh, the the boxes, the styrofoam, the tape, they sell everything. The heat packs, everything on there. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but that's in the very beginning, that's who we ordered from. So uh, the, the, the styrofoam boxes are not a huge issue. If you're somebody that orders fish regularly and you think that you may end up shipping fish someday just to a friend or to whoever, stick the boxes somewhere. Put them in your garage. Stick them out in your shed. Put them somewhere and, and keep them because, you know, the boxes sometimes can be seven, eight bucks a piece. So having one available is, is definitely nice. And I, and I can tell you this from my experience of shipping hundreds and hundreds of orders, the Bigger the box, the charge that they charge you for a bigger box is cheaper than a heavier box. Does that make sense? So, you know, if it's if you have this big box, but you're like, oh, I'm, I'm only shipping a couple of fish, it's not that big of a deal. Just pack them in there with newspapers or something like that. The difference in cost between a small box and a big box is not going to be that much. It's, it's weight that really determines the cost of the fish or the, of the shipment. So, uh, I don't know what more there is to really talk about on this. Uh, and Lisa just texted me saying that I'm lagging. So that's not good. And then she said, never mind, ignore me. I'm going to ignore her now. So, um, Will Richardson, I am local. How do I get in touch with you? Shoot me an email, please. Hosting game night. Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, but yeah, kgtropicals at gmail.com. Just email me there and I'll, I'll, I'll get them to you. Uh, wow. You sent me a lot, Lisa. All right. I'm going to try to go through these pretty quick and then, uh, and then we'll wind things down because it's, it's nine o'clock already. How many people do we have watching? Can somebody tell me? Cause I can't see it on my end. I'm just curious. It doesn't really matter, but you know, I just, just curious how many people we have with us here tonight. Where'd my window go? Here it is. Okay. 145. Okay. Cool. Thank you. The three people that, it, of course, it was Candy Overhauls, Paul Martin, and, and KG Cichlids that answered me first. So. Uh, 
Domingo Nunez. I've gotten my entire stock of African cichlids from Imperial Tropicals three times and never had an issue. There you go. Yeah, I, I've never received fish from them, uh, but I like them. I like the way they're doing things down there, and, uh, and I've heard very, very good things about them. First time I ordered fishes, they died in two days. Ouch, I hope those weren't from me. Uh, L, L Flower one uh, sent that. JM, is there somebody literally just named JM? Is his name JM, Lisa? Or is it Jamie McDonald? Is there somebody new? Oh, okay, who cares? I knew nothing about Beltway Aquariums until I seen your video. They have an awesome selection. Thank you so much. Go there all the time now, and they are about an hour and a half away from me. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I hope you told the owner, I don't remember his name, but I hope you told the owner that, yeah, I'm here because of that bald guy. I he highly recommend the Cichlid Shack in Phoenix. Tons of Africans. He ships everywhere. I would too. And yes, it's because James Largo is a friend of mine. <laughs> but but no, I've received fish from him too, and they've always been good. I mean, I've always, uh, I've, I've never had a problem with fish from him. Uh, there's the one from Will Richardson again. Uh, Super Chat, Jamie McDonald. We got that Friday Fish Facts. Unfortunately, people and companies won't or can't ship fish across the border. Yes, Ron, you have no idea how many people. Uh, let's see. I, I'm stopping because my stream... Okay, no, it's not. Uh, I thought I saw it uh, stop. You have no idea how many people asked me that all the time when I was shipping fish. Can you please ship to Canada? Can you please? And I, and I just couldn't do it. They make it too difficult to be able to do that. And it can be done, but it would cost an absolute fortune. And I would always tell people, look, you know, I'd love to sell you fish, but are you going to order $100 worth of fish and, and pay me $300 to ship it to you? I mean, that's ridiculous. And I actually had one guy say, yeah, I'll do that because I can still say they're from you. And I'm the only one in Canada that has it. And I was kind of like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. The I'm the only one in Canada thing, not because he got them from me, but he still didn't end up ordering them from me because that would have just been absurd. I, whatever. So video isn't lining up with your voice. And then she said, you're lagging. And then she said, never mind, ignore me. So I don't know what Lisa's doing up there. John, did you fast your fish before shipping? Kevin, do you watch my live stream? Not answering that question because I just talked about that five minutes ago. How dare you insult me by asking me a question I just talked about. I love, I love breaking the balls of Kevin Green. I just love to. I've never met the guy in person, but I love breaking his balls. I don't know why. It's just fun because he breaks mine too, so he deserves it. But... Uh, I have some flower horn babies growing. I need to find out how to ship them. Well, what you do, I don't know when you joined us, Aqua Balls, but what you do is you go back to the beginning of this. No, go back about 15 minutes in and just listen to everything that I just talked about. Yes, I talked very fast and, uh, and I covered quite a bit of stuff, but probably pretty much everything you need to know right there. Uh, you know, something I did not get into, uh, is who I preferred, whether it would be UPS or FedEx. Um, nobody, I don't think anybody asked that. Uh, maybe they did, I don't know. But at first it was, we used UPS. Um, and then we switched to FedEx. But we didn't switch to FedEx because uh, I'm a Denny Hamlin fan, <laughs> although that would have fit, right? We didn't switch to FedEx because they had a better reputation than UPS because they don't. We shipped to, we switched to FedEx because we had a FedEx rep contact me and say, I'll beat the price of UPS, whatever it is. And they beat it significantly. And one of the things that uh, I never really talked about, but it's, it's just absolutely true. We lost money on so many shipments, folks. You, you have no idea. And when I say lose money, I don't mean lose money on the total order, but there would be we would lose money on big orders. Like if somebody, we had plenty of orders where people would order like six full grown males that were $60 a piece, you know, so with shipping and all that, you're talking about a $300 order and we would only charge them whatever it was like $30 to ship it. And then the shipment would cost us like 65. I mean, that happened 
all the time. Now, in the end, when you factor in, you know, the amount that uh, we paid for the fish and then we marked them up and sold it, we still made money overall, but we would pay a, we would pay more than what we were paid for shipping, if that makes sense. It happened a lot, a lot more than you would think. Uh, and the reason why for us was because it, we had to, because otherwise we, we wouldn't compete. And it, it wasn't a huge deal because most people aren't ordering one fish. Although we did have plenty of orders that were just one fish. Usually people would be ordering four or five and they'd be, you know, whatever it was, $20, $25 a piece. Sometimes the big males would be $60 a piece. So they'd be sizable orders. So we can take a little bit of a hit and it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, if somebody ordered, and we did have this, order one fish, you know, 50 bucks, and then 30 for shipping, and then it costs us $65 to ship it. And then you add in the, the cost of the, the, uh, the heat packs and all that, because the boxes were usually free. You know, we made no money on those. I mean, that was rare that that would happen. But so when FedEx called me and said, hey, I'll beat the U UPS's prices. And I mean, they beat them by like 40%. So it was a no-brainer. Um, and FedEx was always really good to us. So was UPS. They were great. Um, we had it with UPS. This was the only drawback. UPS came to our shop um, and picked up the fish every day, which was great because the guy would show up and we knew him. I don't remember his name. I'd be like, hey, blah, blah, blah. How you doing? And how's the kids and all of that. Uh, they would come to the house or the, the shop every day to pick up the fish. FedEx, we actually had to, to take them down the street to the FedEx place, which was a quarter of a mile down the road. It wasn't that big of a deal, but when you've got, you know, six or seven boxes that were, that were going, you know, that was uh, kind of a pain. But, you know, what are you going to do? When you're, when you're saving, if you're shipping out six or seven boxes and you're saving $100 on shipping, I'll drive it a quarter mile down the road. Not a big deal. So, all right, Lisa hasn't sent me anymore. She must have fell asleep or something. I don't know what she's doing. We need John's angry face as a perk emoji. Oh, that'd be fun. Could we do that? I don't know if you can actually upload that kind of a picture. Maybe you could. I was wondering which one, FedEx or UPS. Well, there you go. And cooking. New slogan. Do your job or I'll break your balls. You're the only one I like to break the balls of, though. You and Steamfot. I like to break y'all's balls. And I hope Bob didn't take me seriously earlier. I'm going to have to message him later. I feel bad. <laughs> but uh, Kevin knows better than to take me seriously. But Bob, you know, I don't... I haven't known Bob as long as Kevin. Or have I? I don't know. Who cares? When they ordered one fish, two fish, was it also a red fish... You got me to read that, Dan. How dare you? <laughs> Merry Fishmas, everyone. Yes, Merry Fishmas to you, too. Is that a thing? Fishmas? That's cute. Yes, you can, John. Yes, I can what? What can I do? Can I upload pi a picture of me as an emoji? Would people actually like that? That'd be fun. Corey and Bob both have them. Okay, well, then I'll do it. Of course I will. Uh, and Candy is glad she doesn't have balls. Yeah, because that would be really weird. Because I've been calling you a really nice lady for a long time, and and if you, that'd be weird. Anyway, <laughs> this is this is going off the rails real quick, isn't it? Is anybody else streaming tonight? Am I uh, am I stepping on anybody right now? I mean, I don't know, but I am going to start to wind things down here because I literally got home ten minutes before I started the stream, and then it's just been chaos, and I still have work to do for my job that actually pays my bills. So Jeff Rose is live now. Okay, yeah. Emoji John and egg with eyes. Hey, shut up. I don't have to hear that from you. That's not, why is she so mean to me? Jeff Rose stepped all over you. That's true. Yeah. I mean, hey, I was here first. And he's, how dare he? But listen, folks, I don't know how many people are still here watching. I'm going to, I'm going to beg you. I'm going to beg you from the bottom of my heart, please check out the video on Sunday. It's really important to me. I wish that there was just a way that I could share it with people right now, but I'm not going to do it because it's going to be a Sunday thing. I 
I'm crazy about this video. Lisa's crazy about this video. We showed our 16 year old who doesn't even care about fish. She watched it and she said, you know what? I don't even care about fish, but I really liked that video. I've, I've got the people that have seen it, which is very few have enjoyed it. And I am so excited about it. And I cannot wait to share it with all of you on Sunday. And please do let me know in the comment section of that video uh, that you, what you think about it. Why would we not check out the video, John? Well, I'm just begging because, you know, I mean, it's important to me. I've been, this has been a month and a half in the, in the making and I'm so proud of it. I really am. And you know what? I might be completely dreaming. It might be one of those things that I think it's great and everybody else is going to watch it and be like, oh, God. Members only preview of the new video. I thought about that, Paul, but I don't think that there's a way of doing it. The only way of doing it, and this really wouldn't be a terrible thing, but the only way of doing it would be for me to upload it as private right now and then send the link to the members, which I would do, and that would be fine. But what would end up happening would be it would get shared. And that's that's a that's a compliment. You know what I mean? That's not something that I would really be mad at, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of it being a members only kind of thing. You know what I mean? If there was a way that it could be done where I could share it with the members and the members only, I would do it right now. But I don't think it's uh, I, I don't think it's an, an option that's available. I know you can do that on Patreon, but you can't do that here. So um, I got to see the video very carefully. No, you didn't. Nobody has, except for people that live in this house. And so unless one of the kids created this Aqua Balls account, which I've been talking to for months now, I don't think you've seen it. But you will see it on Sunday. Hopefully you'll see it and you'll comment on it and let me know what you think. Uh, because it really is something that has me excited, folks. And uh, like I said, I've said it multiple times. I've got 370 videos, I think, on YouTube, which means I've pretty much talked about it all. I don't know that there's anything that I have not covered uh, either myself or bringing on a guest to cover it. I, I don't think there's anything that I haven't covered. And so you get to that place where it's a little bit stagnant. Like, what do I do now? Am I just going to keep setting up new tanks and doing videos of that? I mean, at some point, that, that, that just gets a little monotonous and a little bit old. Doing this and doing this format that we're doing, it completely... It's almost like pushing restart. It's back in the day when you were playing Mario Brothers and you just push start to just start the whole thing all over again. That is, uh, that's that's it. It's a complete reboot and it's got me re-energized. It's got Lisa energized. It, it's a beautiful thing. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So uh, I'm so excited about it and I can't wait for you to see it. And there's a long message here from uh, from Dan that says, John, a little off topic, but do you have a quick tip for treating ick in clown loaches? Just got six from my local fish store. Wow, you really do know how to change things up, don't you? When I'm trying to wind things down, um, I mean, we've, wow, with clown loaches, they don't do well with salt, do they? See, I'm not a clown loach guy, um, but we've used ick X before. We've used a, quite a few ick products uh, and they've, they've done the trick. Um, methylene blue is another one that does that, which would be safe for uh, for clown loaches, but you destroy your tank. So CC Games, again, I don't know what this guy's deal is, but he just keeps wanting to put money in my pocket. That's two weeks in a row that uh, he's done this. Should I put sub substitute, I think you meant substrate, in a 10-gallon fry tank? Sure, why not? I mean, you know, you don't have to, but uh, but we did. And we had, we had bare bottom tanks too, so... KG, all my content is old so far, so I can't complain. Uh, okay, let's see. Lisa says, Candy, we should do our first video together for both of our channels. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be awesome. I could set it up for you, and you could do it. Log you in here, and yeah, you could go all night. That'd be awesome. Um, okay, so listen, folks. 
I think we're going to go ahead and wind this down because it's 9.15. Y'all want to go over there and watch Jeff Rose. I know. I know you do. So it has been a lot of fun. I'm not going to ramble anymore about uh, 10 things. I hope you enjoy it. I won't talk to you again until next Thursday. Unless you are a member, I will see you on Sunday where we will talk about 10 things and we'll talk about all kinds of stuff. And uh, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. So if you don't know what that is, the member button down there and CC Games, see, that's what you should do because then you don't have to keep doing what you're doing here. You can just one time per month, five bucks, and you can uh, become a member of the KG team. So, uh, but anyway, I appreciate the super chats very much. Uh, and I can't get back to the thing with all the super chats and I can't scroll through it. But CC Games, Jamie McDonald, I'm pretty sure those were the only ones that came through with the super chats today. So thank you all. So very much for that. I appreciate the support very much. And I appreciate the support that everyone has shown this channel. Hopefully you show it a little bit more on Sunday. Uh, and I hope that you believe or you feel that that video is as special as I do. Because it means a lot to me. So don't lie to me. If you don't like it, say you don't like it. I, I'll survive. But uh, I really do hope that you enjoy it. Because I've certainly enjoyed making it. So there you go. Had a lot of fun tonight, folks. I hope you were able to get something out of this whole rant about shipping. Uh, I know I went on and on and on and on, but I do my best. I try to keep things simple. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching Sunday morning. Don't forget, it's coming. It's coming. It's going to change everything. 